Cubs, welcome back to my channel. Tis I, Colton, with Bear Scare Beauty, back again. And I'm actually in a few discords. Uh, if you're new here, please subscribe, it'd mean a lot. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, Bear Scare Beauty, same way it's spelled here. Uh, anyways, I'm on a few different discords, and somebody in one of the discords I'm in was kind of joking, like, oh my god, can somebody please teach me how to do makeup? Half joking. So I was like, well, we kind of take for granted that uh, a lot of people on the internet that are like makeup artists or gurus or whatever just kind of dive into what they're doing without really talking about like the basics of what they're doing, right? So I'm going to start a back to basics little series on my channel and it's just kind of kind of walk through like the real, the basics of doing makeup, right? Um, some good things to do, no, yes, all that type of stuff. So. Without further ado, that's what we're going to jump into. Today is going to be about... Skincare, uh, priming, and foundation. So just keeping it nice and simple. So before this video, I washed and moisturized my face. I also toned. Uh, washing and moisturizing before doing makeup is something you cannot skip. It really helps with, of course, taking off some of the dry skin, moisturizing, making sure that your skin is moist, moisturized. Uh, toning, I think, is an important step. I usually use like a glycolic acid toner. Really helps uh, kind of remove some of the dry patches of my skin. And then I also use an under eye cream. I would also say using an under eye cream is pretty important while doing your makeup because it's really going to help like plump the under eyes a little bit, keep them nice and moisturized. So if you're using concealer and things like that, it, uh, it doesn't crease as much, and you can set it with a little bit of powder without it looking too dry. Back to moisturizing, if you're using uh, one that has a lot of oils in it, I might not suggest that, because the oils in your moisturizer are also going to break down the makeup on your face, which is something we don't want, right? Next, we're gonna talk about priming. I like to use a moisturizing primer as well as like a silicone primer in the T-zone. That's not an all the time thing, that's just a some of the times thing. Uh, if you're like really going out and you wanna look really flawless, you can use a silicone primer kind of in the T-zone and right here where there's a lot of pores and just kind of pat it in gently. Though all over the face, I kind of like to use a moisturizing primer and you don't have to wear a primer, right? It's not a qualification to do makeup. It's not required. Um, I just like it because it can kind of be like that little extra, you know? Next, we're gonna talk about foundation. A big part of foundation is matching your foundation and matching your undertone. There's so many undertones. Uh, I'm cool neutral or like kind of neutral neutral. So there's like cools, neutrals, and warms. And then there's like three types of each undertone. There's also golden and olive as well. And it's important not to get those confused because there are some foundations that are really golden, like really yellow and golden. And people will use that thinking they're that, but they're not. They're an olive tone, which is like kind of a green blue tone. Not every foundation comes in that option. So you may have to kind of mix and match or even settle for like a kind of a cooler toned golden. So we're just gonna jump right into it. I'm going to prime first, and I'll pull you guys in a little closer. I'm going to take, and I've been enjoying this one lately, it's the NYX Bear With Me Primer. It's a pretty moisturizing primer. It's this like nice jelly consistency. It jiggles and it's like non-Newtonian. It's kind of cool and fun to play around with. I'm just gonna take my spatula, put a little blob on it, eat it on my fingertips, and I'm gonna pat this in. I'll kind of rub it around on my fingers, and then I just... Now that we're all primed, we are going to go in with the foundation. The foundation I'm going to be using today is the Stila Stay All Day. This is kind of one of those foundations I go off and on, right? It's sometimes I really enjoy it, sometimes I don't. Just depends, a little drying, it's pretty mattifying, and it's not exactly my right color, but I'm trying to use it up, so we're just gonna use it. Now, there's kind of two ways you can do this. You can dot it around your face, which sometimes is a little more full coverage, or you can take it, and I'm just gonna do this, where I just work the brush into it and kind of work it around on the brush. 
and how I apply foundation, that can really matter too. I like to start in the center of my face, that's generally where people need a little more coverage, and work it out. So as it gets around the perimeter of your face, there's still a coat of it, but it's a little less coverage than the center of your face. All right, now that we have that on, I know I look a little ghastly on camera, but it's gonna dry down and it's gonna be, you know, a little darker. I mean, you can do that or you can kind of darken it up with contour and things like that, it really doesn't matter. And we're also going to discuss kind of like the basic face, right? All that. Now that we've given that a second to dry down, there's actually a concealer in the cap of this foundation. I've talked about it quite a bit. I've used it quite a bit. Once again, this concealer kind of comes and goes whether or not I like it, but I am trying to use it up, so that's what we're gonna do today. Now, what a lot of people do, especially beauty gurus, is they just slather it on in this big like triangle shape. And when you're trying to blend that out, there's nowhere to blend that out. It's just gonna cover your entire face or they're gonna take a beauty blender and like smush it into their skin. If you wanna do that, you can, but it's not really the most flattering look. And you also look really cakey doing that, right? And I'm just gonna use this mirror. So I have a little bit on the tip of this brush and I'm going to take it right into this inner corner, kinda all the way up and just drag it down a little bit under my eye. And I'm gonna take it on the outer corner of my eye and kinda drag it up. And for the most part, that should be all you need. I'm gonna take a little stippling brush. This is the Delium 953. I'm gonna blend that out. See, you, can, you should be able to tell a difference on camera. This is a lot brighter and lifted. This still looks like I have a little bit of bags under my eyes. And I know for a fact that that product creases on me, so I do need to set it. I'm just gonna take a little RCMA no color powder. You can use any powder you like. If you're using a brightening powder, be very sparing with it. Otherwise, you're going to have this like super highlighted area under your eye, and it looks a little weird. So I'm just gently tapping it on where I put that concealer, I'm not using very much product at all. And then I kind of swipe it down and then up. I like to kind of keep my eye open for this and look up so I'm not setting in any creases. And there we go. It looks nice and hydrated still, though it is set in place and it doesn't look dry or cakey. All right, now that I have both of my under eyes done, let's talk about setting the rest of the face. Once again, taking a very sparing amount of that RCMA no color powder, and I'm just gonna set where I know I need it, which is right on my forehead because I have two enormous crevices on there, and product really collects in them. Like, there's no way about it. Even when I set it, it's still gonna collect, but this is just a little insurance, so it stays looking nicer longer. And a little bit right here too, because I got my 11s working for me. And then I'm gonna set gently on the nose. Gonna start kinda on the sides, and then work it up over the nose. But I like to set it on the sides because I do experience creasing around the bottom of my nose. Not really so much in my smile lines though. And then once again, I'm just gently, I'm hardly applying any pressure, and I'm gently flicking it off. And using those techniques, you don't really look too dry, too cakey, too powdery. I think if you're like up close to me, you can definitely tell I'm wearing makeup, but far away, I just look like I have really clear, good skin. This is also a fantastic technique to use on like movie sets and things like that because you don't look like you're wearing makeup. I still have a little bit of like my freckles peeking through and everything like that, so it looks like natural skin, right? Which is something, you can of course do fuller coverage. 
If you want fuller coverage, I'd suggest using a fuller coverage concealer and a fuller coverage foundation. Because the more you layer product, or the more product you use, the more layers or more product it's going to look like you have on your face, right? So it's going to look cakey. If you're using like three layers of product and a lot of concealer, it's gonna look cakey. And then you have to set it with powder. Because if it's that cakey or that much product, you need to set it in place. And then you're kind of venturing into drag queen territory, right? And once again, these aren't negatives to do. If you wanna do that, you can certainly do that. It's up to you. This is just the basics I feel of doing pretty good makeup for kind of everyday wear, right? Now we're just gonna talk quickly about contour, bronzer, and blush. These are pretty easy things to do, but a lot of people seem to use bronzer to contour with, and that's not really what you wanna do. You wanna use a cooler toned contour so it looks more like shadow. And you also really wanna figure out the shape of your face. I have pretty high cheekbones, kind of sunken in cheeks, and I have a smaller nose that I kind of like to make look bigger. I have a small forehead, and I have these kind of like indents on the side of my head. Those are things, if you want to accentuate them, you can. If you want to pull them back, you can. If you want to pull these back, I'd suggest using a highlighting powder so it kind of illuminates the shadow, so to speak, and gets rid of it. Otherwise, kind of do whatever you want there. I'm gonna show you how to contour, on my face at least, but you can apply this to your face shape as well. You just need to find out where the hollows of your cheeks are. Mine are pretty low set, kind of in my beard line. And then when you bronze, you wanna go right above that. And blush should kind of mix a little bit with the bronzer. I'm actually gonna use the same brush that I used for powder, and I'm getting a considerable amount of a cool toned kind of brown, like a gray brown, and I'm gonna go right in the hollow of my cheek right here, and I'm being very gentle, and I'm kind of working it in circles, and I wanna flick it up a little bit. You don't wanna do contour down, because that's actually gonna kind of pull your face down. It can be a great technique if you're doing um, like theater makeup and making your face look kind of villainous, but that's not what we're doing today. So now I'm just working it in small concentric circles. I'm not dragging it in too far. And I'm kind of keeping it a little high up, kind of in the hairline too, because my cheekbone starts here. So I want to work it down here and kind of upward. And you don't really need that much at all, unless you're going for like super cut and carved cheekbones, but that's not necessarily what I'm doing. So from this side to this side, there's a little bit of a noticeable difference, but it's not too intense. Now I'm gonna move up to bronzer. You can use an illuminating bronzer or a matte bronzer. I usually use matte bronzers, but illuminating bronzers can look really pretty, and it's gonna kinda of give you a glow, but the point of a bronzer is to make you look kinda of sun-kissed. So you wanna put it on the parts of your face where someone hits, so kind of right on the cheekbones above your contour, maybe a little bit around your nose and cheeks, a little bit on your forehead, right? It's just kinda of, kinda of give you that overall sun-kissed look. And I either like to use kind of a dome top brush like this, or like kind of a, a fluffy powder brush. And I'm gonna get this bronzer. And we're just gonna start bronzing on this side of my face. Now that that's on, we're just gonna move on to blush. Um, blush is kind of one of those weird things. I'd suggest not smiling when you do it because it's gonna push your cheeks up, and then once you let your smile down, it's gonna drop down. It's just gonna age you. So keep your blush a little higher and a little bit on the apples of your cheeks, and don't be afraid to kind of sweep it back a little bit, right? Because you don't just blush right here, you blush kind of back. And don't be afraid to kind of blend it in with the bronzer as well. 
And I usually like coral or kind of nudie tone blushes on myself, but once again, play with your undertones, find out what works for you. If you go a little overboard, I don't really think I went overboard, but, and since we do like to have fun here, I'm just gonna highlight real quick. This is pretty self-explanatory. You just wanna keep it on the high points of your face. So that's gonna be right on the top of the cheekbones, just a little bit higher to where your blush is. And you can either pat it on or swirl it on, doesn't really matter. I kind of take it up just under my eyes a little bit because I have really deep set eyes, so the top of my eye, the, the, the bottom of my orbital socket pokes through a little more. I'll just do a touch on the tip of the nose and then just a touch right here on the bridge. And then a little bit right above my eyebrows. And there we have it, my little cubs. This is the basics of just doing a quick face of makeup, right? You can adjust this, of course. If you'd like to contour your nose, I'd start being gentle at first and then working it back and down a little bit. And then you can always correct it up with a little bit of powder, either translucent powder or just a, a really sheer highlighting powder. And then just keep it away from the center of your nose. And you can really build the nose shape you want with that. So like I said, I like to widen my nose a little bit so I take it right here and drag it down and then work it up into the eye socket right here and back a little bit kind of gives this continuous shape to the nose and then I work it down a little bit on the sides of my nose it gives it the illusion of being more of a flat wide nose which is just something that I like on myself all right well hey guys thank you so much for watching look out for my next video it's going to be moving on to the eyes and yeah, I hope you have a lovely day. Uh, subscribe down below, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, it'd mean a lot, and bye bye yeah.